Hey class, this is the video lecture for April 7th. Um, sorry for the cough drop, my throat's a little itchy. I'm gonna be drinking throughout the lecture. Um, I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna show you a few things. We, today we're learning about the mass media effects. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, I'm gonna get to the people who didn't present who posted the video, the grades by tomorrow. If not, for def definitely on Wednesday. I apologize for that. I've been feeling a little sick. Um, so first thing before we get into the lesson, I wanted to show you something. Um, I had shown you this, this uh, ASMR lady and she's become popular in this meme. Yep, it looks like that's when we'll be back able to travel. So people are making light of the situation. Um, I also wanted to show you what's going on um, overseas. And um, we talked about 5G in class and there's a big conspiracy theory. People actually think that 5G is transmitting the virus. Um, I don't know how they think that a virus can be transmitted electrically but they're actually causing a lot of damage and lighting them on fire um, at a time where first responders should be preserved for healthcare. It's very dangerous. I mean, you guys can just Google this link. It's all over now. Um, there's a lot of conspiracy theories about 5G. I know we talked about it in class. I even talked to my brother today and he said like, oh, you have to be careful. 5G can you know, cause something. And I told him there's no proof of that. If the signal was way stronger, 5G is not strong enough. Um, it's not even, a, I don't think, judging from the video, as strong as a microwave or, or maybe just about that. So um, that's interesting to note from a previous class. I'm going to go into the lecture. So the lecture is a little confusing today because I want you to watch video number one at the end because I realize it fits better there and I already numbered. So we're going to start with video number two and I'll remind you guys at the end to watch that video. It's kind of long. So this is something I've talked about in class, right? We did it about perceptions and stereotypes, how somebody can be perceived dressed two different ways. And you'll see how magazines always use that stereotype in people's perceptions. So when I began my sociology research, I had a hypothesis. that various people could look at the same exact thing and see something completely different. That seems a little counterintuitive, but let me explain. <laughs> this is a photo of Kendrick Lamar, acclaimed and Grammy winning hip hop artist on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. This is also a photo of Kendrick Lamar on the cover of GQ magazine. And as you can tell, these two depictions of the same human being, the same pop culture figure, are quite different. Now, during my experiment, I asked participants to look at each photo and describe what they saw. And more importantly, tell me how they felt, whether or not they liked the photo and why or why not. So when I showed this photo, I had one participant look at it and said, that's a dope photo of Kendrick. I like it because it's hip hop right there. He looks hardcore. He looks like he's been through a lot. I think the photo is pretty representative of Kendrick. He talks a lot about pain in his songs, struggles and hardships from where he is, people dealing with addiction, and just in general, a rough lifestyle from Compton. I had a second participant look at the same exact photo and say, I know Kendrick a bit because I listened to some of his music, but, beyond, but don't know really much beyond that. His clothes, I think, make him look like a gang member. Gang members might wear clothes like that. He looks confident, but he's not smiling. His hand is in his pocket, which is kind of threatening. We see the same divergence of perception with the second photo. The same first participant said, in this photo, it looks like he's saying, I'm just getting out there. I gotta look clean for the people. I, I gotta put a bit of impression for the people. I'm gonna hold a mic in my hand to let people know that I'm a music artist. He got the skinny tie on with a cheesy smile and a nice fade. But the Kendrick now is not trying to show, uh, put on a show for anyone. He's real. So this looks a little cheesy to me in that sense. 
And the second participant look at the same photo and say, I like this photo of Kendrick more than the other one. I just think he looks a little more friendly and welcoming, I guess. The suit makes him look very sharp, like he's about to present at the Oscars. He looks happy, and I would want to talk to him. What was really interesting to me is that we have two participants looking at two very different representations of the same figure. And even though they saw the same things, they felt something very different. They used their prior context, their prior life experiences to inform and rationalize the judgments that they made. They could be looking at the same thing, but seeing something completely different. And this trend continued throughout my experience. These are two depictions of LeBron James, arguably one of the most well-known athletes of our generation. Yeah, I have the link um, on Blackboard so you guys can see that, but you can easily see how people's perceptions of what people wear, their hairstyles and things like that are altered and, and the perceptions that we have in the media. And that's what we're gonna go into today. Um, do you guys have any other examples of this happening with other artists that you like? Um, tell me in the discussion board. So what is a media effect? Um, most people have a vague idea of what a media effect actually is. They think it only happens to other people. The media is not going to affect me. I'm a professor of media. I know all about it. It's not going to happen to me. We're students of media. We're taking this class. I'm more smarter than that. In a way, yes, but mostly the effects do happen to you and we'll see in this class. You think it's an immediate behavior. Um, change after an exposure to a negative message. This is true. As we'll see, there's also a lot more to it. These uh, effects are constantly occurring and it's a complex process. So we'll look at it like the weather. The weather's always there and it takes on the, what, uh, many forms. It's snowing, it's sleet, it's hazy, it's sunny, it's cold, it's raining. Sometimes it makes you shiver, sometimes you get soaked, sometimes you get sunburned. These are all effects from the weather. And especially since we live in New York, we get all the seasons. The weather is difficult to predict, and there's a lot of factors that affect the weather. Um, the weather can change suddenly. I don't know if you guys remember, I think it was two years ago, we had that freak snowstorm where everybody was stranded on the highways for hours. Um, and, you know, oftentimes we can say, yeah, the snowstorm's coming. Because of that freak storm, they're really prepared now. That's why you'll see people go all out because governments got blamed for not being prepared enough. But it wasn't really their fault. The weather can change drastically. When you look at hurricanes, the pattern can veer off and hit just like Superstorm Sandy hit New York. Um, that's why you have to be prepared for hurricanes, um, whether it might grow or not or, or change course. Um, we have computers to help us predict the weather, but we cannot give us the full prediction. How many days this year will be sunny or snowy? A perfect example of this is what, was when you travel to tropical climates. It's rainy season. When I was in Thailand, I wanted to go to an island and the rain, the weather forecast for the rain was all, every day. You got to just risk it. People, you have to take into account. I was reaching out to friends who were there. What's the weather like? And it wasn't raining. I went for three days and they were like, you got lucky. It didn't rain. So even though the weather forecast had rain all day, every day, it's not 100% accurate. We can also control the weather's effects just as, just as we can control the effects of the media. How do we control the weather's effects? If it's sunny, we wear sunscreen. If it's raining, we use an umbrella. If it's cold out, we wear a big coat. Um, and the media is just like this. It's always around us. We cannot avoid it, especially now with our phones and everything. The media is diff difficult to predict because there are a lot of factors. We know certain types of messages will lead to certain kinds of opinions and behaviors, but we cannot predict how, whose opinions and behaviors will change. We also have power to shield from its effect, and it's always changing and affects us all. So the first thing is the manifested media effects, the things that get you right away. And these are easy to spot. Um, it's when you're home, you're hungry, it's 10 o'clock at night on a Friday and you see a Domino's commercial. Man, I will love Domino's really bad. Guess what? Domino's, order on the app, get the pizza. It's when you watch a YouTube clip or a meme and you laugh. And we can see the triggered responses in these messages. Other messages are harder to see. Um, they're easy to observe and attributed to particular exposure. Excuse me. So process effects. Other media effects that are not so easy to spot. The media is constantly trying to influence how we think, feel, and act, and whether 
we manifest those things. We're always in the process of being influ influenced and you'll see through this class and future classes how, if you haven't already in previous classes. So here's a good example. I don't remember this movie and I think you guys are probably too young unless you watched it for a film or something. The 1978 film called The Deer Hunter. It starred Robert De Niro and Christopher Walken about two working class Americans who go fight in the Vietnam, in the Vietnam War. There's a very famous revolver scene which we'll watch now. And you might not know this scene, or you might have seen it spoofed a lot. It's been spoofed, I think, in The Simpsons in other ways, in more comical ways. So basically, if you're not aware, um, a revolver holds six shots and you have to, it's not like a clip. So they put one shot, they spin the wheel and they hold it to their head and people, um, they make that they torture them that way. So what do you guys think happened after this movie came out? If you can guess. So two boys at home were playing um, and they found the revolver under their parents' bed. They played Russian roulette and one of them died. The producers were actually blamed for this. Why would they put such a violent scene um, into a movie that could influence kids? So if we looked about, if we looked into the manifested effect, the children felt excitement over the power and danger of the game. Their attitudes were shaped because they thought it was a cool thing to do in the movie. They were too young to process um, how significant this was. They shouldn't have watched this movie to begin with. Um, but it was not manifested right away. It was only after they found the gun. The process effects was that the parents should have realized the danger and hid the gun, locked the gun. So, you know, who do you think is at fault here? Do you think we should blame the movie producers? Let me know in the discussion. Um, the public and media are also caught up on manifested effects, but we need to think of the process effects. So there's four dimensions to media effects. We have time, type and various types of effects, valiance and intentionality. So there's the timing of effects. These media effects can be immediate or long-term, but timing of effects is more about evidence when the effect starts than more about length. Here are some examples immediately. When you're scared doing a movie or you play a silly video game with your cousins and you get scared, like I showed you in the previous class. Um, seeing friends' photos on Facebook, you might see somebody, your cousin or your friends that had a baby, and you say, oh, that's so cute. Um, it's a happiness effect when we smile, when we read about a sports team doing good. Or unfortunately, if you're a Giants, Jets, Mets fan, um, the anger you feel at them always doing bad every season. Um, these effects are easier to spot. The, the long-term effects. We get happy after many exposures. Um, no single message or exposure is responsible. 
we need a pattern of repeated exposures. And this is much, much harder to notice because it happens after so many exposures and after a lot has happened. Example, you watch years of crime shows, which have become really popular in syndication, such as Law and & Order, and you start to worry about strange crimes occurring to you. The likelihood of those strange crimes happening to you are, is so low, but since you're constantly uh, exposed to this show, you, you, you're scared of every little thing. And one episode cannot cause this after years of watching. Um, another good example I have here, um, there's a show called Caso Cerrado. It's basically like a crazy talk show in Spanish um, that older Hispanics love to watch. A lot of it is fake. Um, my grandparents love watching this and they watch it so much that they think it's real. I can't tell you how many times both um, my Ecuadorian and Puerto Rican grandfather and grandma all, all three of them, I don't really talk to my other uh, grandfather, have told me, oh, you got to be careful because I saw this on Caso Cerrado and it could be real. Um, and this is, was an example. You can watch the show. It has the subtitles. This is a hilarious episode where they talk about Pokemon Go. Remember we mentioned Pokemon Go in class. Um, this guy had, uh, for some reason, when Pokemon Go made the game, a rare Pokemon was in his backyard. And these two girls jumped the fence and the guy um, was scared that they were trying to kill him, they, that there was robbers or something. And he has to have the stand your ground law and he hit them with a brick and they got the leg broken or something. So they're fighting for damages. Um, and it gets crazy. It kind of makes sense, but you know, come on. Like some of the other episodes are ridiculous. All right, moving on. So the types of effects. Most of the concern about media effects falls on the behavior of people such as watching violent video games will make people violent. So we're going to look in, a, in one of the classes towards the end of the semester, how is the media too violent? But we all know examples that people always say video games are making kids violent and things like that. So here are two examples. Um, and two years ago, Trump came out and said video games were to be blamed for mass violence, but a uh, psychologist um, and others have said, no, it's not. And um, let me just pull it up here. If I can find it, I went too far. So it actually went to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court justice said, psychological studies purporting to show a connection between exposure to violent video games and harmful effects on children do not prove that such exposures causes minors to act aggressively. And this is an ongoing debate. Do violent video games, music, um, movies cause children to commit crimes? And, it could, and it's your opinion, right? Um, my personal opinion is that while most people won't be affected by this, there are people who have certain psychological conditions who are more prone to see this and act it out. But should the whole movie and music industry stop selling these types of materials because of a few people? I don't know. Let me know in the discussion. And I don't know if you guys know about Marilyn Manson. He was a huge artist when I was a kid. And then Columbine. Why? Do you guys remember Columbine? It was the first school, mass school shooting. Um, the two teens plotted against it. And when they looked into the background, they were playing violent video games and they were listening to Marilyn Manson. He has a lot of destructive lyrics. And Marilyn Manson said, after that, my whole career was over. He was, one of, he was like on par with Eminem at, at that time in the early 2000s. And even Eminem, um, if you're a fan of Eminem, he had a line that says they blame it on Marilyn, um, referring to Columbine. And I've had that link in, in, I put this link so you guys can read that as well. Not only the video links. Also, they say that seeing sex on TV is going to make you more promiscuous. Who's to tell? Um, but we need, we need to think beyond behavioral effects and look at others such as cognitive, belief, attitudinal, emotional, and psychological effects. Also, not just the effects on society, but the effects on society and institutions. So let's look at the cognitive type effects. So the media plants ideas and information in our mind. We're always taking in information uh, during our exposures, especially when you're on your phone, when you see billboards, reading magazines, watching the news, et cetera, et cetera. 
And we get a lot of our information from where? Textbooks, news, magazines, newspapers. But we also learn social information. How do we act, right? From the media. As children, we learn from observing older children around us. I know a good example of this is people in my family, cousins that were raised together, if the older child was potty trained, the younger child was, easy, was easier to potty train because they saw the older cousin do it. As opposed to a kid who was raised alone, it was harder for them. They didn't have that, that person looking at that and mimicking it. So the media provides tons of role models for children to learn from, Sesame Street, things like that. And children watch lots of TVs and characters can put forth a strong influence in kids learning. Um, one example that I like to make is raunchy songs and dancing. I remember, cause I'm from the Bronx. One time I went to back home, um, I'm in Long Island now, but I went back to the Bronx and I was outside of a bodega and there was this little kid, like probably like in kindergarten singing. I know you want, it's, a, it's an old Lloyd Banks song. Like, I know you want to smoke my weed and get high. Like, he didn't know what he was doing, but that, that exposure to him listening to that song is influencing his future behavior. When he gets older, he's going to think doing those things, you know, and there was sexual lyrics and I'm like, what is this little kid, you know, singing this song? Um, so anyway, we've also learned about social models as adults. We learn how to behave from rich celebrities, quote unquote, what attractive people are and successful sports stars. And we live vicariously through them and their exploits, right? As we saw in another class, when we like to see the media, we want to see things that are different from our life. So the lives of these rich and famous people are very popular. You know, I can never live that life in a mansion or driving these fast cars, but I'm interested in it and I can live it, quote unquote, through them. So they tell us what it takes to be successful and happy in life. Um, I needed to look like this to be considered successful. A great example of this, and I'm sorry, any Kardashian fans, but I have to use them. Lips were not a big thing. Um, nobody really cared about how what, what women's lips look like. All of a sudden, Kylie Jenner promoted lips. People wanted to get lip injections. Um, and they're all, there's, it's like, if you don't really realize it, but they're all involved in all this aspects of our society. With Kim Kardashian and Kanye West, it's like they almost planned the world domination. You can look at Yeezys, right? Kanye West gifts the Yeezys to Kim and the whole family, and they have the photo of all the family you know, sizes of Yeezys and Northwest and Sane are all wearing them. And you start to think, wow, you know, they're really rich and successful. If I want to be that way, I have to mimic them and I have to wear the Yeezys. I have to spend $300 even more on ridiculous, probably sometimes ugly sneakers to be quote unquote uh, successful. Um, behaviors and emotions of TV characters are all examples of cognitive, cognitive type effects. So then we have belief type effects. It's when you have faith that something is real or fake. We all have beliefs on religion and death. Religion and death. Maybe you think that when you die, you go to heaven. Maybe you think that when we die, you just place in the ground and nothing happens. Maybe you believe in one religion or another. Maybe you believe in no religion. So media shows us values used by characters and people in news. Do we accept or reject these values? So let's look at Walter White from Breaking Bad. And I think I showed you guys the example the trailer. Do we reject or accept the values of, of Walter White? It seems like the show sets it up for us that we accept it, you know, what, whatever. The system did him wrong. He's taking back society. But is it okay for him to kill and sell drugs? And because at the end of the season, sorry for spoilers, he gets really like evil. <laughs> um, but is that okay for him to do that? Is it, or is it the way that we accept or reject the values that the show has put forth? Um, we watch lots of love movies and have beliefs and our beliefs about what love actually is, is formed from these movies. I mean, I mentioned this in other video lectures and in class, we think love is all this, you know, one thing we're going to meet and it's going to be happily ever after, like all the movies, not like that at all. Um, and media can shape our beliefs on attractiveness. Here's, here's a good example. So for men uh, in the past few years, beards are all the rage, right? If guys need to be attractive, they need to have beards. But for, the, for years, for the longest, beards were, you know, hoboish, scuffy, unmaintained. Um, I saw an episode of I'm Starting to Watch Community and season and halfway in the first season, Jack Black comes on and he has a beard and it's all unmaintained. And that's to purport this, you know, sloppy image. 
which was the image of beards for so long. And all of a sudden the media, you know, beards are a thing, right? So every guy has to get a beard. Um, moving on, the media uh, affects our beliefs on success and relationships. What does it mean to be successful? Um, the, media, the media tells us garbage men don't make a lot of money when they make $100,000 a year. They make very good money. Um, and look at relationships. The media has told us for a long time relationships should be this way or another. I, I should have I linked it here, but I don't know if you guys seen on Instagram, there's a, sorry, I'm going too far ahead. There's a new thing called a throuple. It's when three people have a relationship and these people are rejecting society's norms of a two-person relationship and they're just sharing each other, saying that, you know, the old standards of relationship don't apply to us and we, we found something better. I don't know. Um, you guys can look that up, just a throuple, and you'll see. I think it's a little weird. Um, next, we have attitude, attitudinal type effects. It's the judgment we make about things. We compare things to our standard. So what are our standards? All of our standards are different. So I'll use my example of going to a party. So if somebody invites me to a party. If it meets my standard, it's okay. If it exceeds my standard, wow, this is cool. This is good. This is dope. This is outstanding. I love it here. They have the best trap music. Um, if it fails our standards, bad, terrible, whack, uncool. This party has no rap music. Why did they invite me? And you might have completely opposite standards. You hate rap music. You want to hear pop music. It's different for everybody. So the media, in media influences our judgments on all types of things. So there are people who only listen to Fox News, who only listen to certain religious character, leaders or characters that express their judgment and they accept it as their own. They don't do any homework or any digging to see if, you know, how it is. And I can be this way with music too. There's certain types of genre of music, like for me, country, no way. Um, I'm not even going to give it a chance. I should, right? Maybe there's some country music that I would like if I actually gave it a chance. Others, more media literate people, make up minds by our standards. Okay, that doesn't work out. I'm going to try it. I'm going to listen to country music. Maybe it'll work. So let's see what we have here. Oh, we have a Fox News link. We'll just play some of it. You can watch it later. All right, so I don't know if you guys saw that one. That one was, was a really interesting one. Where is it? So if you don't know what cash for clunkers were, um, you probably were too old. It was when Obama was first elected, he had this program called Cash for Clunkers. Sorry, I'm getting tongue twisted. Basically, you would turn in your old, like, crappy car, and you would get a credit to buy a new car. And this was a good thing because people could upgrade their cars these cars probably you wouldn't even get as much as they were offering for the car if you if you traded it in and it would reduce emissions because the older cars spread more uh, pollution and don't have enough gas mileage so here it says that they would give have access to your home computer obviously not true i don't know how they even came up with that um so you guys can look at this on your own time um let me just pull up the lesson here oh sorry this is like a thing that always pops up at the top you guys can't see that so here's, here are other ways. Let me go back. So I'm a Drake fan, but I don't like all Drake's, Drake's music, right? Is this new Drake song the best song ever because I like it? Or am I just jumping on the bandwagon? Like Drake came out with this new song called the Tootsies. I don't know, something like, like, like a dance, like the, I, I forgot the name right now, um, where you just do like steps and everybody's like, oh, wow, it's so cool. I love Drake's, all of Drake's music, when as soon as it comes out, I run to download it, but I don't like that. Scorpion, the other album, like everybody said the best double album. I only, I deleted most of the songs, maybe like 10 songs out of like almost 25. Um, and I don't care what people are bandwagon, you know, listening to on a bandwagon or playing in the radio nonstop. Other people just love it. You know, they like, oh, wow, I don't, I, anything Drake puts out, I'm a fan, or they just like it because what the media is telling them to like, it's always on the radio. 
Um, another example of this, the media throws its weight behind a candidate, but should I? Media, is the media throwing its weight um, behind Biden or Sanders? It appeared for a while they were all Sanders, um, and I favored a Warren, even though she didn't make it, and you, that's up to you. Are you liking the candidate because the media portrayal? You have to look into that. Um, even our standards that we set for good music or good leaders is set by the media. Again, going back to the other thing about what's good music. Um, and attitudes rely on beliefs because beliefs are often the standards we use when making judgments. Hollywood has defined beauty for us, but we know everyone can't be skinny, tall, six pack, blonde, whatever, whatever the new thing, you know, whatever the, now the Nicki Minaj, Kardashian body, everybody can't be that. And people have died trying to achieve that. It's unrealistic. Um, but we still use this at the tone for attractiveness, right? And it's interesting how attractiveness can change around the world. What we think is beautiful here, it's not the same around the world. And this is a good article that photoshops one person what the beauty standards are across the world. So this is what the ideal woman's body likes in 18 countries. So this is the, the original image of the woman. She volunteered to do this project. So if she was in the USA based on media standards, this is what her ideal body would be like. Moving on, if she was in Egypt, this is what her body would look like. You can tell the tone, um, her skin tone is darker. Argentina, you can tell here that she's less curvy. Mexico, you can see in China, it's way different. It's um, more thin. Netherlands, UK, Peru, Italy, and you can tell what we think is a beauty standard here is not the same as it is around the world. So maybe one country prefers a skinnier than a curvier, whatever. Okay, going back to the lesson. Um, and it can affect our attitudes about society or opinions on friend, our, of our friends. Like if people, we all know shallow people who don't want to be friends with other people because maybe they don't look a certain way or they don't dress a certain way. Moving on to emotional type effects. The media makes us feel things. We can have strong emotions, fear, rage, anger, and lust. Um, so I use this example that was from a few years ago. If you guys remember, um, there was supposedly a caravan full of immigrants coming through Central America up to Mexico. They were supposedly going to destroy our nation. They were going to ransack the border, climb over, break the wall. And they were full of all gangs and criminals, supposedly. Um, we can also have weaker emotions, sadness, peevishness, or boredom. When I actually looked into the article, who's coming here, you find out that many of them are just women and children who are escaping gang life through a long, complicated history that, that is partially the United States fault by intervening in old wars. Um, too much to get into. Um, so it's sad these people have to leave their home for a better life. Um, horror movies, they trigger fear. Bloggers give us outrage. Magazines, erotic magazines make us feel lust. Music gets us hype. Oh, I want to go out for a night in the town. Well, when I could, um, I would put certain Drake songs, certain you know, music that was going to get me ready to you know, be hype and go out. Anyway, um, and a long-term emotional effect is desensitized, being desensitized. Um, and we all can be desensitized. If you're always looking at violent um, things, you're, it's not going to affect you. Like, for an example, I think I say it later in this lesson, Somebody who always watches horror movies is not going to be scared as much. And something that happened to me as a reporter, you know, I didn't want to be a reporter writing on breaking news, crime, and death. But somehow I was thrust into it during, my, during an internship. I was good at it. And they always threw me in there. Um, and it became so bad. Like the first time I did a story, it was about a little girl who got ran over. A kid, a 16-year-old kid had a joyride, stole the SUV. 
And as he was driving, he hit a six-year-old girl with her grandmother going to kindergarten and they both died. And I remember I felt so excited to work for the New York Times because I was, it was my first assignment as a stringer. Like I had, I had made such a big milestone, but I felt really devastated to have to be writing on that because not only did I see how the family of that, the little girl's life was affected, I had to go to court and report on the family of the boy. They also lost somebody. That guy went to jail for years and they were crying, you know, and you see that. And the first time it's your, your heart broke. I don't know if any of you guys are studying journalism, but most likely if you work in newspapers, you'd be thrown into things like that. But like the more you cover it, the more it's just like whatever. And I saw that happening to me. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get away from journalism. Um, anyway, moving on. So with media, we lose sympathy for people in media and in real life. So here's some psychological type effects that media actually has the power to influence our bodily systems in ways you may not realize. Um, if you watch a suspenseful movie, our heart rate and blood pressure is up. Um, you ever saw a scary movie that really scares you and you jump? Tears, you can actually cry from a sad scene. I'm going too far ahead. Um, erotic photos can lead to arousal. Um, calm music can lower our heart rates. We have chillax music, which has grown really popular um, in the last few years. But these effects can wear down from the first time we're seeing them to continue if you continue watching them. And people who always watch horror movies aren't so scared so easily. And we have behavioral type effects. The media can trigger actions. If I see an ad and I go order the product. So I remember some of you showed those uh, as seen on TV commercials. I definitely need one of these ridiculous things, right? Maybe you don't, but the ad will make you. When we get bad news and call somebody to talk about it. So the other day, my half of my family's uh, Ecuadorian and I have family in Ecuador. Ecuador has a really bad coronavirus outbreak and there's actually bodies being thrown in the street because you know whatever the, the standard of health care is not uh, set up like here the first thing i did was email my grandmother she's here luckily um is everybody okay i emailed my aunt on whatsapp how are you guys doing um and i'm pretty sure a lot of you now with the situation if you hear about somebody in the place you know where this is going on really bad if you have people in italy or france and spain even if friends that live in the city you might see an article and immediately call them or message them. And there's also long-term behavioral effects. You can get addicted to video games like we saw with that kid um, on Dr. Phil and he didn't want to leave the house or we get so addicted to our cell phones, we can't put them down. So what are the micro type effects? The types we discussed before have to do with individuals, but the media can influence organizations, institutions, and society. It can influence whole groups of people. Politics has changed due to media, especially with the TV and the internet. You have politicians tweeting. Um, this is a big reason why Trump was so successful in the beginning of his campaign. Um, compared to Hillary, Hillary was spending millions and millions of dollars on ads, and Trump wasn't. He was just tweeting, and he had a large audience on Twitter. He used that audience as advantage. You know, he didn't have to raise uh, donations like Hillary, um, and he was very adapted that, and he's still doing that now. Family, society, and religion have all changed due to social pressures that were or are, or are heightened by the media. Um, let's look at religion right now. We can't even have church, right? It just has to be shut down because the media is saying we could all get sick. And yes, it's true. Um, other things, society, maybe some things that are going on and you're seeing in the new society has to change. Um, I think maybe they should have did a different approach, especially with the churches since faith is so strong maybe get a big field and you know spread people out but luckily we have the technology to live stream mass and things like that so family um and i know one of you did the thing on cheerios but i haven't seen it yet but we're still going to watch this video that's right folks cheerios give you nourishment that counts and it tastes so good Mothers have been feeding their families Cheerios for generations. So when General Mills ran this ad last year, Bell told me that Cheerios is good for your heart. Is that true? It seemed like a winning formula. A timeless cereal and a universal theme, love. 
we saw this as one way to tell the Cheerio story in a very new, fresh, and interesting way. Fresh and interesting, in part, of course, because the mother is white, the father is African American, and the little girl, well, she's just adorable. Mark Addix is chief marketing officer at General Mills. He says the overwhelming response to the ad was positive. But there was hate-filled backlash on the internet, much of it overtly racist. You got so many negative comments on the website that, as I understand it, you had to actually take down the comment section on the website. We did. The team, the Cheerios team, took down the comment section because we thought there were some hurtful things, um, some things that weren't positive. But that didn't stop General Mills from running this follow-up ad. You know how our family has daddy and mommy? On the biggest advertising day of all, Super Bowl Sunday. You're going to have a baby brother. And a puppy. Did you ever think of backing down because there was a certain segment of society that was not accepting of this? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. These are scenes from American family life that General Mills commissioned Norman Rockwell to paint in 1938. But households today are looking less and less like these images from the last century. The difference between family lives in 1965, let's say, and in today is enormous. Johns Hopkins sociology professor Andrew Churlin has been writing about the American family for over three decades. We've just lived through a huge period of social change, and you know what? There's no reason to think it's at its end. I think it's probably still going on. In fact, the change is unprecedented. Marriage recently hit an all-time low, but for those still tying the knot, more than 15% of new marriages are interracial or interethnic. As for raising kids, one-parent homes are on the rise. And the number of same-sex couples with children, though small, is the highest ever recorded. Ah, dinner time. In the 1950s, the message was there's only one kind of family that's okay, and that's the married family a la... So as we talked about the media setting tones for, for society, during the 1950s, people thought this was the only way the family could be. Um, and they were hesitant to change. I'm going to move ahead on the video because the presentation is getting, this lecture is getting kind of long. And you can watch the video at the link page on Blackboard. Um, and two parent families have shrunk and replaced by childless couples, single parents and others. Marriage is way down, divorce is way up. Critics said the media portrayed people out of wedlock and in divorce and normalized it. Is that true? What do you guys think? They also normalized alternate lifestyles to make it okay. Media shows married life neg negatively and cheating as normal. Has the media normalized cheating? I mean, we not, might even be aware because they do it in trivial ways, um, such as like in this housewife uh, shows, like, um, they're just being fun and promiscuous and without real consequences that we in real life will feel if we did the same thing. So how else has family has changed? How else have families have changed? TV's used to and can be a bonding experience. Remember in the change in media paper, um, all your older relatives said people would come together to watch or hear the news, either on TV or radio. Even when we were younger, we were on the cusp of a new generation, um, probably the last. Uh, um, everyone used to sit around the living room and watch shows. And for me, it was TJF on ABC. If you don't know, it's Full House, uh, Steve Urkel, The Dinosaur Show, um, and a lot of other shows that they gave on Friday. The whole family would watch that from 8 to 10 p.m. But sadly, it's not even like that anymore. Maybe, I think in a way, Netflix has kind of brought it back. Um, we might all get together. I know recently I got together with my family to watch Tiger King. Um, I've only got halfway through. Anyway, but now most of the family separated. Think about how much time you guys are locked in your home with your family and how much time you're actually spending together in front of the TV with them, as opposed to how much time you would have to 15 to 20 years ago. 
So now we have a family. The son is playing Xbox in his room. The mom is watching TV in the living room. The dad is looking at his iPad in his office. And the daughter is looking at her Instagram on her phone in her room. Everybody's separated. There's screens everywhere. Um, relationships, relationships have also changed. Parents have less time with children. More and more people are working. Um, it's no more the dad just works. The mom and dad both work now. And parents have less time with their children. Um, here's a quote that I like uh, from the book, I think. Rapidly, our technology is creating a new kind of human being. Sorry, my face is in the way. I'm going to explain this meme in a little bit. Um, one who is plugged into machines instead of relationships. One who lives in a virtual world rather than a family. So let's look at this thing. Sorry, it's in Spanish. So it says, when the family visits the grandmother. Um, and the grandmother is saying, it's better for you to guys to just stay in your house, right? Look at what everybody's doing. It's sad because before phones, people would actually interact with the grandmother. Um, and sometimes the conveniences of technology serve to cut us off from others. We depend less on face-to-face -face contact. It's great now with whatever's going on with, with COVID-19 that we're able to see family members with screens, right? I got to see my niece playing around, jumping, dancing with this little doll that I got her. And I, would, I feel sad that I can't actually go see her. And years ago, if this had happened, I wouldn't be able to see her at all. Maybe send the photo. It's not the same. But when life was quote unquote normal or goes back to normal, some people are using technology instead of going to see, the per see them in person, right? Um, and it's not the same. Maybe you FaceTime somebody um, instead of actually go visiting. So some say digital relationships foster real ones. Yes, that's definitely true. Um, especially for dating apps, you're going to foster every relationship sometimes if you use the dating apps, um, which I believe, but we interact with family more, um, make new friends, lovers online that we interact with. So use this to foster more in-person relationships. Do not use the media the way as the meme is to actually ignore your family. Um, and once everything goes back to normal, um, I know I'm going to take advantage of going to every family function, um, going to see my grandmother, everybody more. Um, yeah, things like that. Um, even if, we, okay, so let's look at the traditional family. Even if we say, okay, TV destroyed the traditional family, there's a lot of outside factors. Sorry, I think I might have missed this, a slide. No. So, like we go, going back, sorry, I skipped went ahead. Um, excuse me. If we look at, if we say TV to promoted cheating and, and divorce and to uh, remove and uh, destroy the traditional family, maybe, right? But we have to look at a lot, of, a lot of other outside aspects. We cannot just blame the media. The medium income is down. It takes more money to support a family. Both parents have to work now. More women are working and careers are more important than ever. Um, Look at your parents. Maybe they settled down when they were in their young 20s. Now that's delayed. It's not even about that anymore. It's more about conquering your career goals, getting your foot in what you want to do, and then starting a family in your 30s. Um, people work more and have less time at home. And we are, then when they are home, think about it. Now that everybody's so busy working more and more, they just want to relax. They want to drink wine. They don't want to work, do more work with their kids. So the media influence is an element of the change, but it's not the only reason. So here's a problem. As, as more are more people turning to careers and success for personal fulfillment or to afford a flashy lifestyle, a lifestyle imposed by the, me by the media? So I'll take me in, as an example. I wanted to be a reporter or professor because it makes me truly happy and it's rewarding. I love interviewing people. I love writing about people who overcome adversity and come from lower income backgrounds and make things of themselves. Um, and it's rewarding for me to work with students and see them grow. Or theoretically, if I was like this, I just want to be a professor because they make lots of money and I can finally get an Audi, which I always wanted to drive a cool Audi, right? which are you? Um, and we all know people like this. Um, people that work so hard to afford, to afford flashy things that equal success to them. What is success? Success is, is based on what you think. Um, people, we know people that work 70 plus hours, 60 plus hours a week to afford a nice car, Range Rover, 
they don't even have the time to drive the Range Rover. They're so busy at work, they don't even have time to enjoy the toys that they can afford. And sadly, some people just want to have this lifestyle because that's what they think is success. And I used to be this way and I transformed from toning down all um, material possessions and moving all my money to travel. People always question me, how can I afford to travel? Um, you know, how do I make, I don't make a lot of money um, adjuncting, but I make enough money to not spend stuff. You'll be surprised. For example, cell phones. I stopped buying the new iPhone, new Samsung. I have my hundred dollar phone that works fine. And right there, that's already $900. And that could be like uh, weeks, two weeks in, in living good in, in South America, Southeast Asia. Moving on to balance. Um, Things can be seen as positive or negative. Who was to say what is what? When one person thinks it's positive, it might be negative to somebody else. Um, again, we have difference of opinions. Um, individual. A positive direction is when effects help you achieve your personal goal. You know your goals and look for ways in the media to achieve them. Um, you, go, you follow diet and exercise clips, how to apply beauty products, which players for my, final, for my fantasy football team, um, and they're looking for information in a positive direction, right? But when the media's um, goals conflict with yours, it's negative for you. Um, if I buy all the beauty products wasting money and they're just stacked up on the side of, of my dresser and I'm not buying things that I need, I, need, I don't want to fix my car to buy these products. If I buy expensive, useless exercise uh, equipment because the media tells me I should be fit, quote unquote, and it just becomes a towel rack like my cousin that we always make fun of. And you pay and bet on fantasy football to a point that you're neglecting your rent or things like that. So here's a broader perspective. If the media teaches people to commit crimes, will it trigger criminal behavior? So let's um, look at suicide. Moving on, let me know what you think in the discussion. So as a, as a general rule um, for news organizations, the media does not report on suicides unless it's a celebrity or unusual circumstance. Because actually when people read about suicide, they mimic it and it's dangerous for society. Um, so we rarely report on it unless maybe it was like an actor or celebrity. Copycats, um, their shootings or bombings. There's some discussion about this. Um, sometimes people are inspired by people who do these crazy acts, um, mass shootings, um, they want to follow. Um, before I get to the example that I have here, I wanted to mention New Zealand had a, a very bad mass shooting recently and what the government did, they were, they were not going to show his face because in some create, in some circles, these crazy people idolize these guys, the guy who shot up, um, the church in South Carolina is idolized and his face is all over the internet. So New Zealand made it a conscious effort to say, no, we're not going to put his face out there so people can, can idolize him. And these copycats, when there's a shooting, um, there was a big shooting in Pittsburgh at a synagogue. And what happened after? Synagogues all throughout the nation have to have increased security just, in, just for copycats. This is a synagogue in Manhattan with cops. Um, so hold on one second. Sorry. So there's tons and tons of positive info to keep us informed. We can pick better leaders and we can solve societal problems. In the end, society is stronger. We can see that now with the coronavirus, the governments are not prepared for this and it's up to us to make up for it. Society is becoming stronger and we will be stronger after this. Um, one way is my local library. They took a, um, they have 3D printers. So all the libraries in Suffolk County have put their 3D printers together and they're printing um, the bands and the shields for the, doc for the nurses and doctors to use. Um, society's pitching in, they're, they're donating meals, they're clapping for people at 7 p.m., they're doing whatever they can. And if we look at the shooting, it's like, what can we do to help? Um, and, as, and if you think about these shootings, you think, oh, wow, um, you know, Jewish and Arab people have been against each other since eons, right? But people have come together and say, no, this is a hate crime. 
that affects everybody of ethnic and religious backgrounds. So in this case, when the synagogue shooting happened, Muslim communities raised a lot of money for the synagogue shooting victims to show, you know what, we're united in this. Doesn't matter what race we have. And it can be discouraging seeing on the internet all these crazy things, but it's also incur very encouraging to see the good stories of people coming together. So moving on, intentionality. Um, we often look for an effect and seek certain messages. Um, here's some examples, I'm looking for an effect. I'm so bored, I'm going to watch Fast and Furious 20 and get excited when the cars, you know, jump from one building to the other without actually using gravity and falling. Um, I forgot what number that was in, but it was ridiculous. I'm so sad my date ghosted me. Let me watch Broad City and laugh. We're looking for an effect to change our actual background. And Broad City is a very good show. It's on Hulu. It's hilarious. You should watch it if you're looking for a show. Um, we look for a new positive experiences. So now a lot of people are cooking. Um, we look for new tasty videos, right? A huge thing that's popular now, I don't know if any of you guys have done it, is you make this like South Korean coffee foam with instant coffee and you whip it. And I saw it on BuzzFeed. And then like now, like a lot of people on my Instagram are making this thing. Um, we want to see a concert info for a new show. Or I, like I said, mentioned I'm turning up tonight. I want to be hype. I want to listen to the music that's going to get me in the right mood. Sometimes we look for one feeling and others come to us. So let's say I wanted to go out and I have the Drake album, but it goes to the sad song and I start thinking about my ex, oh, blah, 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 whatever. These things happen. And our moods that we're looking for are interrupted by the media. Um, you might go on Facebook to be distracted and then learn about bad news and then you feel sad. Um, you're distracted, you need a break from your work and you're actually worse off by going to Facebook. Um, and these effects can be long-term. Years of, of watching action movies make you think the world is boring. Ye and this is for my grandfather, um, subject of uh, probably every lecture. Um, years of watching UFO shows on history or TLC makes you think aliens do exist. Yeah, I tell him to stop watching those shows, but he keeps on. All right, so media effects, media can have different effects all at once. Um, with an action movie, you can become emotionally desensitized or you can believe the world is really dangerous. This is a long-term cognitive effect. Um, I know one movie was taken where that was a rare example, but then everybody's thinking like, oh, you have to be careful when you travel, they could kidnap you, whatever. And an unintentional effect, um, even if you watch Fox News or other programs, and even if you're skeptical of it, analyze it and have your own opinions, you may still grow distrustful of politicians because they're always subjugating their, in all types of news, um, things into politicians. So the three ideas about media influence. Media effects are constantly occurring because we are always being directly and indirectly influenced by media messages. Media works with other factors in our lives to influence us. And we can control the effect process in our own lives. Um, so guys, I want you to write a discussion. This would be due, this is a Tuesday class, so it'll be due Friday. And also a reminder that on Thursday, we're having a live class to go over and introduce the group projects. Um, also, sorry to Olivia, your media monitors got pushed back from next week, Tuesday to next week, Thursday. Um, so guys, go back in on Blackboard, watch the first link and see 10 other ways the media manipulates you in their messages and you'll be shocked. I uh, look forward to reading your discussions and I hope everybody's okay. Um, I'll see you guys on Thursday for the live class.